One of the most common mishits that the average golfer, sometimes even the better golfer, will miss the club face is on the inside towards the heel. And this can be really destructive, not only for your distance, but also for your accuracy. So in this video, let's talk about some of the more common causes for hitting the ball or tending to hit the ball in the heel and its corresponding fix. So if you want to get some more distance and accuracy and hit the ball more in the center of the face, then by all means, stay tuned. <music> Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. As you know, I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter down the fairway. Longer and straighter all the way to the green because to me, that's what makes golf fun. So if you agree, I hope you'll like, subscribe, and comment. Now, if you look down in the description, you'll notice that I've left the links to two free items that I think are gonna really help you with your swing and with your game. One of them is my 50 tips ebook on how to hit your longest drives ever. And the second one is, if you're a slicer, you'll be re real interested in my 30 minute cure slice video where you can actually cure your slice in 30 minutes on the range while watching the video live. So I hope you'll pick those up. I think they're really gonna help. All right, let's get into why golfers heal the ball. And it is one of the most common misses, much more so than hitting the ball in the toe. Hitting the ball in the toe, to me, means your swing is a little bit healthier. Hitting the ball in the heel means, to me, that your swing is a little bit more ill or sick. And generally speaking, when we hit the ball towards the heel, we also hit the ball low. See, we tend to miss kind of diagonally. So we tend to miss, if we're gonna miss in the toe, we tend to miss high. When we tend to miss in the heel, we tend to miss a little bit low. And so down in the heel low is where we're gonna get the absolute most backspin from shots. So we're gonna get excessive backspin. It's also gonna cause a gear effect and a twisting effect at impact. Generally, when you heel the ball, you're going to hit it. You're gonna hit uh, low pulls, and slices as well. So if that is your pattern, you know, you want to identify if you're hitting the heel or not. And the best way to, I think, to identify where you're hitting it in the club face is to use some foot spray. So you get like a Dr. Scholl's foot spray at the dollar store, spray a good coating of it on your club face and hit about five or six, maybe eight balls. And you'll start to see um, the trend. Of course, you're not going to hit it in the same exact spot every time, but you're really going to start to see a pattern emerge. And if that pattern is in, is in the heel, then we want to try to diagnose why that's happening and figure out how to correct. All right, the first most common way that I see people hitting the ball in the heel is simply trying to hold the lag in the hands for much too long. So they've kind of fallen under this brainwashing spell that you're supposed to um, you know, hold your wrists as long as possible and then release them at the last possible second. And so they end up holding the wrist angle too long and they end up coming into the ball with the heel leading and the face open. So you would tend to have a lot of heel shots and high slices this way if you're simply late because you're holding the lag too long. So the corresponding fix to this is first making a paradigm shift and understanding that the activity in the hands does not start down here but it's actually been proven over and over again now that the activity in the hand starts back here so you want to give the club a good outwards throw from the top of the swing and that's going to allow the toe of the club to catch up with the heel and hit the ball more squarely and in the sweet spot rather than hitting it like this in the heel with the face open which is what a lot of slicers do. All right, a second really common way, maybe the most common way that golfers hit the ball on the heel is because they pull with the arms. So something like this, if you pull down with the arms, like there's a lot of teaching out there that tells you you're supposed to pull the butt of the club at the ball and that's supposed to help you get power. And it's just crazy. So if you were to pull, again, you're gonna get this kind of impact unless you were to, in the process of trying to flip the face, but even if you were gonna to try to flip the face and fix the face that way, you're still gonna to tend to hit the ball a lot in the heel. With the driver, you might hit some low pulls, but generally you're gonna have kind of a pull and a slice pattern going on when you're pulling it. The pull will often result, if you've got a chicken wing going on in the follow through, something like this, this is all often 
preceded by a pulling move. So we definitely don't want to try to pull the arms or pull the club down into the ball, but rather we would rather rotate the club through impact rather than pulling on it. Now it can be really tough to fix pulling on the handle of the club or trying to harpoon the club handle down into the ball. It can be really tough to fix because it makes you feel so strong. It's hard to get out of because it's such a powerful feeling move and yet it really is doing the opposite. It's actually slowing the club head down not speeding it up. My favorite drill to get out of the throw, and you want to do these by the absolute bushel basket, is set up around a pole or a small tree, standing with the elbow opposite the pole, and just practice wrapping the club head 90 degrees around the pole without allowing the elbow to crash into the pole. This will really get you to feel the earlier throw of the club head from back here without pulling on it. So you're replacing the pull with more of an outward seeking throw out this way. And notice I cannot pull my elbow because I will bang it against the pole. So any kind of pulling motion and I would be met with um, a sharp pain from hitting the pole. So something like this, keep practicing wrapping that around. Uh, do that 15 or 20 times in a row, then you might walk up and hit a few golf balls softly and uh, just get the feel. What does it feel like to throw the club back here rather than pulling? So a third really common way that golfers mid handicaps down to low handicaps will heal the ball consistently is by simply returning the arms at a different measurement than they started. So let me turn this way and show you. And I've got the chair here too and I'll show you that's going to come into play as well in a second. So Let's say if I take my one arm measurement here and I'm about a hand span from the left thigh like this. So this is about the right amount of space. And I draw the club back, but instead of the arm returning back to this one arm space, the arm returns further out, out into space here. And now it's, see it's a hand and a half and I've got the club on the outside. Well, that can make you hit it in the heel. And I do have some students that this is a pretty tough fix because anything fixing at this high of a speed at impact can become, you know, it's a really bad habit and it can take a little while to get out of. So what you might try is you can put another object just outside this ball. So you can put a golf ball, a water bottle works good. Um, in my teaching, I like to use a yoga block. Um, the empty basket for range balls might work too. Um, maybe a little piece of wood, anything that will discourage you from going out too much outside the original measurement and striking the ball towards the heel like this because the toe of, the, toe of my club will now hit the ball and kind of cue it off to the side. It'll give me really good feedback. Most of the time, the reason that golfers mess up this measurement and end up out with the arm further this way, often you can trace the root of that back to um, the early extension error or the butt coming forward off the wall like this. So if my gut butt comes forward enough this way, See, all of a sudden, I can't return to that initial one arm measurement because my thigh and my hip are kind of in the way here. So I kind of go out with it like this. My arm kind of raises and goes outside with it. And there I am in the heel again with my miss a lot of the time. So you want to check for early extension. You might put your bag and your head covers behind you. Take a video from the down the line angle and see if you are not staying back, but instead pushing off towards the ball, going into your instep. And that is often the cause that goes together with the arm path getting messed up as well. All right, I'm gonna to try to hit one here. And what I'm gonna be focusing on is throwing the club from the top without pulling on it and keeping the butt back on the wall. So let's see what that looks like.
and watching that in slow-mo, don't forget that on video you see the result of the throwing force or the torque being applied to the grip much later in a video than it's actually happening. So I'm throwing it back here, not pulling, but instead advancing the handle of the club by the shifting and turning of the body while the butt stays back on the wall. And you should be able to get out of uh, most of your heel hitting there and start hitting it a little bit straighter and farther because you're hitting it more towards the sweet spot. Hey, I hope at least one of these tips really hits your wheelhouse and you're able to kind of take it and run with it. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting us today. And as always, I will either see you in the next video or I hope to see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care.